All right, back to rationals again. In this case, we're going to go through and deal with rational equations, uh, and we're going to solve some rational equations. So let's start out with um, a relatively simple case uh, to start. So the first thing that we want to do is we, well, there's two things that we want to do right off the bat. One is figure out what variable um, or what value the variable cannot equal. So in this case, I look here, and I know that I cannot divide by zero. So therefore, since I can't divide by zero, and I only have the x in the denominator, that means that x is not allowed to be zero in this case. <clears throat> the next thing I need to do is figure out what the least common denominator is. All right, so the least common denominator in this case, I've got an x, I've got a three, and I've got a six. And remember, six is nothing more than two times three. So therefore, it means that I'm going to need the x, I'm going to need the 3, and then I'm going to have to introduce the 2. So I take all the factors that exist. So 2 times 3 times x, which of course is 6x. So what we're going to do is take every single one of these fractions, and I'm going to multiply them by 6x. All right, so we'll just rewrite everything now being multiplied. And then 6x times 5 divided by 6. All right, so let me change the color because we like to have a different color when crossing things out. Just one of those things for me. So now I look here in the first fraction, and I've got an x and an x that are going to simplify. Here the x is going to stay, but I've got the 6 and the 3. So the 6 becomes 2, the 3 becomes 1. Same thing with here, that becomes 1. And then here, this 6 and this 6 are gone. So now, if we look at, <clears throat> excuse me, if we look at what we have left over, I just have the 6 in the first one. Here I have the 2, the x, and the 1 in the numerator, so plus 2x. And then here, the only thing I have is 5x. All right, so now let's simplify. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x. We're going to solve for x. I end up with 6 is equal to 3x. x is therefore equal to 2. We always want to check, so we're going to have to check every single one of these to make sure that it works because there are going to be things known as extraneous solutions. So solutions that come out, but then when you substitute them back in, they don't work, which means that they're just extra. So now we get, all right, 1 half plus 1 third is equal to 5, 6. So let's get common denominators here. So I need a common denominator of a 6. So I means I've got to multiply numerator and denominator by 3. So I get 3 sixths plus. Here to get a 6 in the denominator, i got to multiply numerator and denominator by 2. So if you go through and do the arithmetic, finish this out, that is indeed correct. All right, let's check the next one here. <clears throat> Here it's a little different, but we're still doing the same process. And if you recall from the last videos we did when trying to simplify <clears throat> um, adding and subtracting and just trying to simplify these, when you combine them, uh, we used either changing the division into multiplication so that we can go through and get common denominators, or we just multiplied everything by the common denominator. So here, we're actually just going to multiply everything by the common denominator, so that way I don't have any denominators to deal with. So now here, okay, well, x cannot equal. So let's factor this first. So x squared minus x, that's going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. So the nice thing here is, if you look, right, I've got an x plus 1 here, an x minus 1 here, and then the last one has both of them, so that makes it really nice. So x cannot equal negative 1 based on this denominator, <clears throat> and it cannot equal positive 1 based on this denominator. All right, so now we'll go through and we'll multiply every single thing by this x plus 1, x minus 1. So uh, x plus 1, x minus 1 times, let's just write the whole thing as one big fraction, or on that side, that is, so x plus 1 plus 1 divided by x minus 1, and then this equals, so I do the same thing with the other side, multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 1, x minus 1, all right, so now, Remember that when we multiply and we've got two different terms, we're actually just going to take all of this and multiply by this one, take all of this, multiply by this one. All right. So when we go through now, if I'm going to take this times the first one, 
the x plus 1s are going to divide out. So I'm left with just 2 times x minus 1 when I distribute this to here. Now we're going to distribute this to here. We have a plus sign in between. And if you notice, I have an x minus 1 and an x minus 1 in the denominator. The whole idea of doing this is to get rid of the denominator so it's a lot easier to solve. So now I'm going to have 1 times the x plus 1. So we'll just leave it as the x plus 1. Over here, this is really nice because the whole idea is to get rid of the denominator. So the denominator and all this that I multiplied by in the numerator are gone, and that equals 1. All right, so now I've got 2x minus 2 plus x plus 1 is equal to 1. So let's clean up this side. I'm going to get 3x minus 1 equals 1. So 3x is equal to 2, which then finally means x, whoops, it didn't write, x is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so now here's the fun part. We've got to go through and check. I'm going to use another color here so that it doesn't get confusing as to where things are. So let's check this. That means I've got to substitute 2 thirds in. So I get 2 divided by 2 thirds plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 thirds minus 1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 thirds squared minus 1. Okay, so now let's deal with what the denominators are. So I've got a 2 divided by, so 2 thirds plus 1 third, remember 1 third is just 3 over 3, that's going to give me 5 thirds plus 1 in the numerator, uh, 2 thirds minus 3 over 3, so that's going to be a negative 1 third. And then over here, I've got 1 divided by, so I got the 1 still, divided by 2 thirds squared. So 2 thirds squared is 4 ninths. And then I'm going to subtract from the 4 ninths 1, which is 9 over 9. So 4 ninths minus 9 over 9 is going to then equal negative 5 over 9. Now remember, division is nothing more than multiplying by the reciprocal, so therefore when we go through and do this now, I'm going to divide here, so I'm going to get 2 times the reciprocal of the denominator, so 3 fifths, plus the reciprocal of the denominator, so negative 3 in this case, and then the reciprocal of the denominator here, negative 9 fifths. So now I'm going to actually go this way because I'm running out of room on the screen. So now when we look at this, I get 6 fifths minus 3. Okay, so then I need to have common denominators. So if I'm going to have common denominators, then this 3 over 1 needs to have a 5 in the denominator. So that would be 15. And this should equal 9 over 5 and a negative. So 6 divided by 5 minus 15 divided by 5. Well, that'll give me a negative 9 divided by 5, and this checks out. So the solution is indeed x equaling 2 thirds. Now, you might think, oh, come on, do I really have to do this every single time? Yeah, you absolutely do. All right, so let's take a look at this one. we got to factor first. So through factoring, we're going to factor this denominator. We have x and an x in the first term of each. This tells me the signs are going to be the same. This tells me they're both going to be negative. So negative, negative. Factors of 10 that add to give me 7. Well, that's going to be a 5 and a 2. Here we go again with the nice part here because of the fact that these two denominators are the same thing. So I don't have to bring in a new denominator or a new factor to deal with. Um, let's go back now and say, all right, well, what can x not equal? All right, well, we know x cannot equal 2 because that would make the denominator 0 here and the denominator 0 here. We know that x cannot be 5 because then that denominator is 0 and so is that one. So we'll start there, go through our process. All right, so we know we're going to have to take that x minus 5 times x minus 2, and I'm going to multiply by the fraction that's already there. So this might take a while to write, and you're going to have not a lot of room to do it. But And that's one of the reasons that I show it this way. Oops, that's supposed to be a 2. Hold on, let me erase that. So it's going to be a 2 there. My bad, sorry. All right, so then in those parentheses, I'm going to have x 
minus 2, and then multiply by everything that's there. So 6 divided by x minus 5 minus 4 divided by x minus 2. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so now we know that these two factors and these two factors divide out to 1, so I'm going to get x plus 13 on this side. That's it. Then I'm going to distribute these two to each fraction. So when I distribute this into here, the x minus 5 and this x minus 5 are gone. And I'm just left with 6 times x minus 2. Then we distribute this to the second fraction. So now minus 4 times. The x minus 2's will divide out to be 1. So now it's just 4 here and the x minus 5. All right, so let's clean this mess up. So x plus 13 is equal to 6x minus 12 minus 4x plus 20. So x plus 13 is equal to 2x plus 8. All right, so clean that up. Then I subtract x from both sides. I'm going to get x here. I'll subtract 8 from both sides. I get 5. So now I look back at what we have here, and it says, well, wait a minute. Based on this <clears throat> that we did here, I cannot have a 5 in the denominator. So since I can't have a 5 in the denominator, and it's because I've already said that it cannot equal 5, there is no solution. So no matter what I do, no matter what value of x I substitute in here, nothing's going to come out right. So there is no value of x that will make this original statement true. Okay, let's go to the last example that I have here. All right, so we've got a lot of factoring to do before we even start. So I've got to factor all these denominators. So let's go through and start factoring. If I take a look at the first one, I'm trying to give myself as much room as possible. So an x and an x in the first term and then this tells me the signs are opposite, so plus, minus. And I need factors of 3 that differ by 2, with the larger one being positive. So then that means 3 goes here, 1 goes here. All right, this one. We've got an x and an x in the first. The signs are different. And then, oops, let me make that a little bigger. Signs are different, and then the larger one has to be positive. So 2 will go here, and 1 will go here. All right, so this is good, because now I see I have a common factor here and a common factor here. So at least, you know, hopefully I'll only have 3 to deal with and not 6, because um, that would just be annoying. All right, so now an x and an x, first terms in each, they both have the same sign. They're both positive. Factors of 6 that add to give me 5, well, that's going to be 3 and 2. Okay. So the least common denominator now. I've got an x plus 3, an x minus 1, and an x plus 2. The x minus 1 here is already taken care of by this one. The x plus 3 here is already taken care of, and the x plus 2 is already taken care of by this guy. So I've got x plus 3, and it doesn't matter what order I write it in. And then x plus 2. I like to go from left to right just so that I don't lose track of anything. All right, now we know that x cannot equal, uh, let's see, it can't equal negative 3, it cannot equal 1, and it cannot equal negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply everything by this. Um, let's see, trying to make sure I can fit everything in here. I'm going to rewrite this so I have 5 divided by x minus, oops, sorry, x plus 3, x minus 1. I'm just going to put a line here so it doesn't get confusing. And then subtract from that 3 divided by x plus 2, x minus 1. And that's going to equal 1 divided by just transferring everything that's been factored out. All right. Every single term has to be multiplied by the common denominator. So I don't have a lot of room here, so I'm going to multiply it, just show it here. I've got x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 2, and I'm going to do that for each of these. x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 2, and then lastly, this one's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 1, 
x plus 2. So this is what we're going through and trying to simplify now. So here's the nice part. Again, all the denominators will go bye-byes. So that's gone, that's gone. x minus 1 is gone, x minus 1 is gone. Then I look at this one. x plus 3 stays, but x minus 1 goes with this x minus 1, x plus 2, gone. x plus 3, gone. x plus 2, gone. All right, so now let's rewrite all of this. So all that's left, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I have 5 times x plus 2 minus 3 times x plus 3 is equal to the 1 that's left over times x minus 1. So let's clean this up. So I'm going to distribute. So I get 5x plus 10 minus 3x minus 9, because the negative comes with it, is equal to x minus 1. Substitute back in. So now, uh, or not substitute, I'm sorry, just simplify. So on this side, I get 2x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. Subtract the uh, x. So if I add, subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to get a negative 2 over here. Subtract x, and I'm going to get x. So x is equal to negative 2. That's the only thing that it can come out to. But here we go again. We get another one of these that just happens to come out where, all right, this is the same as here. It doesn't mean that this will always happen. Okay, it's just that that's what this particular one is. The process is what I'm concerned about. Then you look at the end. If I have something that shows up here, then that means there's no solution. If I have something that does not show up over here, I do like I did in the previous examples, and I substitute it back in to see if it actually works. You might end up where you have two solutions and both of them work. You might get a bunch of solutions and none of them work. You might get one out of three, whatever. So there's no set like that this is always going to happen. So again, we end up, just happen to end up with one that says there are no solutions here. No matter what value of x you choose, this original equation will never, ever be true. All right, well, hopefully all these uh, solving of equations and using the least common denominator multiply every single equation so you don't have to deal with denominators at all. You don't have to deal with fractions at all. The idea is to get rid of the fractions by multiplying every single term by the common denominator. Hopefully this was helpful, and if so, uh, please continue to watch our videos. Of course, if you're in our pre-calculus class, you really have no choice. But for those of you who are not, uh, hopefully this was helpful.